What's going on, people? Welcome back to Double Clutch Auto Reviews, and thank you so much again for tuning in for another review video. My name is Mark, and today I am here with my buddy Eric's 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4 Night Edition. The Bighorn is actually Ram's most popular trim level, sitting right above the base level Tradesman and just below the Laramie. This is a value packed trim pickup truck, upgraded with a few more standard features that most people want in their daily driver slash family vehicle, so it doesn't quite feel like a bare bones fleet truck. This truck is a decent middle ground between super basic and ultra luxury. However, is the all said and done price tag of almost $60,000 worth it for this truck? Let's dive in and check it out. Starting off under the hood, this Ram 1500 has the base model engine option, which is a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, making 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. And that's also made it to the mild hybrid electric e-torque add-on system, which is essentially an electric motor that replaces your alternator, giving you a little bit more low-end torque and a little bit better fuel economy while working with the auto start-stop system. Fuel economy is rated for 19 miles per gallon city, 24 on the highway, and 21 average overall. With a 26 gallon fuel tank, you can expect to get around 500 to 625 miles on a full tank of gas. This Pentastar V6 is mated to the eight speed torque flight automatic transmission and four wheel drive. You'll find yourself spending an extra 3,800 bucks if you want four wheel drive over rear wheel drive. And I know that this specific engine is not the typical topic of conversation when it comes to these Ram trucks. Those are usually the Hemi V8s or the Cummins turbo diesel motors that people are talking about. But I do have to say that this Pentastar V6 has been around for about 10 years in varying displacements, and Chrysler has made over 10 million examples of these motors. They have also gained a reputation for being relatively reliable, at least the modern ones. At least we know the weight distribution with this motor is pretty good, with it being tucked pretty low and close to the firewall, and most of this motor is actually behind the front axle, so that's pretty good. We also do have to consider though that this engine bay also holds the Hellcat motor in the TRX, and you definitely can't see any wiggle room in that engine bay. And now let's talk max towing capacity and max payload. With this specific truck's trim, it has a Pentastar V6 with the crew cab, and it has the six foot four inch bed. This specific Bighorn gets around 6,100 to 7,100 max towing capacity, depending on which towing package you get. And it also has a max payload of around 1,800 pounds. For an individual like my friend Eric though, he does not need the max towing capacity or max payload that are available with a 1,500 chassis truck. He predominantly uses this truck for his daily driving, his errands, carting his family around, and the occasional trip to Home Depot. He essentially just wanted a safe, comfortable, and reliable full-size crew cab pickup truck that could fit his whole family comfortably. And let's be honest, I can guarantee that many people that own a 1500 chassis pickup truck don't need all of the power of the Hemi V8 or the Cummins turbo diesel. And now let's talk exterior styling of the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Night Edition. The Night Edition package is a $2,300 option that gets you a lot of good bits on the exterior and in the interior, but it also improves the looks of the exterior in a very good way, in my opinion. For starters, it gets you these rather sharp looking 20 inch polished black wheels, which are a huge improvement over the regular Ram 1500 Bighorns wheels. We also get these blacked out headlight bezels and the blacked out grille, which really toughen up the look of this whole front end. Along with that, we also get the blacked out badges all over the exterior of the truck, including the 1500 e-torque badge on the hood right here, and even that big brawny Ram badge right in the center of the tailgate. We also get blacked out mirror caps and some blacked out interior bits. And finally, for the night edition package, you get color matched front and rear bumpers and a locking rear differential. And as you can see, Eric's truck is painted in the granite crystal metallic gray, which is a really nice color and I think it works really well with the black accents. With the night edition package, you also have to upgrade though to the level two or B Bravo equipment group, which is a $2,700 option. With that, you get heated seats, a heated steering wheel, two additional USB ports, and two additional 115 volt or household outlets. You also get the seven inch digital gauge cluster with the power folding and heated mirrors. And lastly, you get the remote start system along with the ParkSense 
front and rear parking assist system with auto stop. Coming around to the tailgate, we of course have a dampened tailgate. Just push the button and then let the tailgate glide down for you. Very nice. Eric has a six foot four inch bed with a rhino liner from the factory and an aftermarket tonneau cover. We have four simple tie down hooks, one at each corner. That's pretty standard along with some exterior bed lighting, which is very handy of course. Other than that though, there's not that much else interesting going on with the bed or the tailgate of this Ram 1500. Pretty much just your good old standard pickup truck bed. Closing the tailgate's very easy. It's super light as many modern pickup truck tailgates are. The only problem with this whole bed setup in my opinion is there's no step up. I mean, obviously if you're athletic enough, you can just pick your foot up on easily and climb on up, but there's no step system that GM has, for instance, integrated into the bumper. Or for instance, on the Nissan and Toyotas have that fold out step right here. This truck, you just have to hoik your leg on up and climb on in the old school way. Now before climbing on into the interior of the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn, we'll start by taking a look at the key. Now this is actually a really nice looking and feeling key in my opinion. Definitely makes it feel a lot more premium. We of course have the remote start feature right here. Push that button twice, beeps the horn and then it fires right up for you. You can also push it again twice to shut it down. Pretty neat. Now what's unfortunate though is I'm gonna lock the truck and I'm gonna walk up to it as if I'm just getting in. We do not have an automatic unlock feature with the doors, unfortunately. You have to push the button like the old school way and open it up. We'll start off by taking a look at our door cards. Honestly, nothing too special or crazy about it. We do have a decent amount of storage down here in these cubbies along with an additional storage spot right there. What I don't particularly like though is this kind of faux wood trim that they used. To be honest, it just kind of looks and feels cheap. Otherwise, at least Ram did use some nice soft touch materials on the armrest and right here where it matters more. And now we'll take a look at these seats. These seats are cloth, yes, but they are actually very comfortable and still well bolstered. In fact, Eric wanted cloth seats in his new truck, not leather. Some people actually prefer cloth over leather for various reasons. So these seats actually work really well for him. Something else to note about this specific truck is we do not have any running boards down here. But with this grab handle right here, it's really not that difficult to use that and climb on in relatively easily. With the key in the center console and the push button start, we'll fire it on up. With this trim Ram 1500, we do have the power adjustable pedals. That's a pretty neat feature, especially for a particularly shorter or taller person. Right off the bat, sitting in here, the steering wheel feels nice in my hands. The leather's around a medium-ish quality as far as its feel goes, but I'm sure it's relatively durable and I'm not complaining about it. I really do like this center logo with the Ram badge right here. Gives it a real brawny and muscular look with that edged out beveled design and that chrome finish. That looks really cool. And now taking a look at our gauge cluster. This is the seven inch digital display in the center with the analog tachometer on the left and the analog speedometer on the right. The center screen is also relatively configurable with the centerpiece and all of the icons going around the entire thing being able to be changed to whatever you want via this directional pad right here. So we'll cycle down. You'll see your speedometer first and you'll go to your vehicle info, which essentially shows you all your vehicle vitals, so to speak. Going down, you have your fuel economy information. After that, we have our trip info. Then it goes to our start stop settings. After that, our radio station. Then we go to our screen setup. You push OK. And from here, you can select which icon you want to configure. Going all the way through to the upper right, upper left, center, your favorites. You can even change your odometer from singles to tenth decimals. I don't know why, but that is a little interesting feature right there. You can even go to your current gear, your right side, left side, defaults, all these different configurations. For instance, I'll click on lower right and you can cycle through whatever readout you want, all your vehicle vital signs and whatnot, even a compass, outside temperature, your range to empty, average fuel economy, all these very neat things that you can configure it to. Very nice touch there, Ram. I like that a lot. Now move on from the gauge cluster and talk about the gear selector. A lot of people have conflicting and controversial opinions about this gear selector. I personally don't mind it. Eric doesn't necessarily like it. He doesn't like the electronic feel. He'd rather have like a mechanical, real satisfying clunk when you put it into gear. A lot of people feel that way. And I can see what they're saying. But to be honest, this works. It leaves a lot of room in the interior. There's no big steering column shifter that's getting in your way of the volume control knob, for instance, like it did in the Nissan Titan. I drove a couple of years ago. 
Nonetheless, though, it does work. It doesn't seem to have any real hiccupy problems as far as I'm using it today, so not bad. You can also activate your four-wheel drive right down here. You can go into four-wheel drive auto, four high, four low, or you can also turn on and off your auto start stop button right here. There is also a nifty little storage compartment right above the center screen. It's not that big, but it can fit a couple of small items and be a pen, notepad, a phone, whatever. And there's also an additional 12 volt outlet right there. And now we'll move on to our center screen. This is the 12 inch touchscreen that has been slightly upgraded over the 2021 model year. I'm gonna go through it relatively quickly with you guys, starting at the home feature. This brings up your radio and your navigation. We'll go to media. This brings up your radio. You can cycle through Sirius XM, all these things. It also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, of course. I am very happy to say though that Dodge did keep physical buttons to adjust the temperature and the fan speed up and down. They didn't make you have to go into this screen to adjust the temperature. Big fan of that. I do wish that there were physical buttons for the heated seat and heated steering wheel though, but you know what? I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. You just tap this and adjust it high, low, off, and whatnot. Same thing with your heated steering wheel. Just tap it, turns it on, tap it again, turns it off. Next, we'll go to our navigation. That pulls up our map, as you can see. Pretty clear. It's relatively responsive to my touch. I think Dodge did a pretty good job of making this map and navigation system clear, responsive, and user-friendly. You can, of course, either zoom in and out with your fingers like this, or you can just zoom out and zoom in with the plus and minus buttons and push that just to recenter to go back to where you are. Next, we'll go to our vehicle settings. We have our rear view camera. And as you can see, that is quite crisp of a rear view camera, must say. We also have the trajectory lines for the truck and the trailer hitch, very cool. And then from here, we'll go to our settings where we can configure a whole bunch of different options. In safety and driving assistance, this is where we can configure our park sense volume, low, medium, and high. Geez, that's obnoxious. We can also turn on and off our park sense braking assist. And now skipping down to the voice activation, we can configure a wake up word, which is pretty interesting. You can either have it off, say, hey, you connect, or hey, Ram. Uh, sure, why not? Now going back, I'm gonna fly through the rest of these, we can configure all of these different things for our navigation, our camera settings, mirrors and wipers, lights, our brakes, doors and locks, seats and comforts, the key off options, our audio settings will go into here. We can adjust if we want the surround sound on or off. Obviously, we're going to have it on. Why not? We can adjust our equalizer right here. And now let's go into our apps, which pulls up a whole bunch of different things. What I like is that you can actually favorite something in particular, like for instance, let's say you wanna favorite your heated wheel. You can star this and then it brings it up to your favorites. So now that I've starred it to be in my favorites, all I have to do is go to apps and go to favorites and it's right there and that activates my heated steering wheel. Something that I have to mention that I'm not a fan of at all though, is these climate control settings do not save when you go to remote start the truck. The air conditioning will be the same, but the heated seat and the heated steering wheel won't turn on automatically. That's kind of a bummer, especially in the dead of winter. I feel like Ram should integrate something where you could apply that and use that when you remote start the truck. And lastly, I'd like to mention that yet again, I'm very happy that Ram incorporated a physical volume knob with an on and off function right there, as well as a physical tune knob. And if you wanna shut the screen off and just not look at it, you can either push this button to turn the whole system off, but then obviously your radio turns off. But if you wanna have the radio on with just the screen off, you can do that via that button as well. And all you have to do is touch the screen to turn on or push this button again to turn it back on. Moving down to these four switches, we of course have our traction control off. We have our tow haul and our parking sensors for the front and rear. Right below that, we have our four USB ports. We have two USB-A and two USB-C with an aux jack right in the middle. And below that, we have our little phone holder slot. I'll stick my old phone in there. And it Holds it relatively well, actually. There's also another little storage compartment right here, which I think is the perfect place to put your key if you want while you're driving. Next, we'll go on to our center console. We, of course, have a quite large armrest right here that folds up and has a two-stage configuration. If we put this down and fold this up, you can also see we have tons of room in this center console piece right here. These two cup holders in this little tray with the coin slots is also movable. You can move it all the way forward and all the way back to fit however you would like it. If you move it all the way back, you can access your additional household outlet and this extra little storage compartment right here. What I also find interesting is that there is a max fill line 
right here so you can see how much stuff you can pile in here before this thing won't be able to move. I find that very neat. That's a nifty little touch right there, Ram. And I know this center console has so much storage room with this type of configuration, but I honestly think I prefer a bench seat. Sure, you get a little bit less storage space instead of having this giant enclosed center console, but in turn, you get a usable center console that would be fine for most people that pretty much equals the size of this thing. But you can also fold this section up and it creates another seat so you can have six passengers in this vehicle. To me, that seems more important as far as practicality goes. And now coming onto the passenger side of the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn. There's two things that I'd like to point out. First off is this little storage compartment. It's on both sides of the center console. Actually, the driver and passenger both have this little sliver of a storage compartment. It doesn't look like much at first, but it actually seems like it could be quite useful. You could store phones in there or papers, some folders or whatnot. Actually, I can see that coming in quite handy. Next off, we'll talk about our glove boxes. We, of course, have a two-tiered glove box setup as every 1500 chassis pickup truck should. This top one opens with this button right here. As you can see, it opens rather quickly and there's a decent amount of storage in here. We can obviously tell Eric has kids now and it's a perfect place to store his boogie wipes. Closing that up, we can go down to our second glove box and you can see there's additional storage. This is where he keeps all of his owner's manuals and his registration and whatnot. And now moving on to the rear seats. Please don't mind the car seat back here, of course. I'm sure you've already seen with all the evidence of the boogie wipes and whatnot that Eric has decided to have two children in the last two years since I last reviewed his old Chevy Silverado back in 2020. But this is a perfect opportunity to show you what it looks like when you have a car seat installed in here. Obviously we have this seat here, but there's still plenty of room. I can easily climb around it even and come sit in this seat behind the driver. And the driver's seat is in the position that it would be as if I were driving the truck. And I'm just under six feet, 200 pounds. And I mean, I'm telling you, I have room for days in this truck. I mean, look at this. I can lie all the way down. I mean, I can imagine sitting back here on a long road trip and being comfortable for hours. We also have some more cup holders in the door cubby, as you can see, with two additional cup holders in the back of the center console right there. There's also a little storage compartment and four additional USB ports and another household outlet below that. We also have a center armrest, of course, which is very nice for rear seat passengers with an additional two cup holders right there. And for even more rear seat storage versatility, you just easily pull the bottom of these seats up and you can reveal another storage compartment underneath the rear seats. This is obviously the perfect spot for Eric to store all of his baby toys. And lastly, we have yet another storage compartment in the back of this truck. It's underneath the rear floor mats. You just gently pull up, that button unclicks, and as you can see, voila, this reveals your secret, now not secret, storage compartment. All right, I'm now jumping behind the wheel of the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Night Edition. So my first impression of this truck is it's actually a very comfortable, quiet, and relaxing truck to drive. The wind and road noises are actually pretty minimal. What you mostly hear is just the engine noise, really, and that's only under full throttle. The ride quality of this truck is also very good. As you can see, I'll go over this big bump right here. The energy is transferred into the cabin, but it's not like really jostling you. It doesn't give you a big jolt going over some pretty serious bumps. It actually is dampened really well. The visibility is great. I can see all around me sitting in this truck. I have no problem seeing pretty much every single angle on this truck. All right, now let's do a little bit of a pull. Track control off. <laughs> all right. All right, now coming into a corner. Braking is good. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of body roll, but honestly, the handling really isn't that bad, especially for what I was expecting out of a 1500 chassis pickup truck. I guess the best way I could describe the handling is that it's definitely not fantastic handling. However, the truck communicates well enough to me that I know where its limits are at. Eric honestly complains to me all the time about the acceleration in this truck or lack thereof. It has enough get up and go for most people, I'm sure, especially pickup truck buyers that aren't expecting a super fast vehicle anyway. I'd also like to talk about the front seat dimensions. Both the head and leg room in this truck are 40.9 inches. Now that's obviously not bad. I don't feel cramped at all in here. I have plenty of room, but just to note, Eric's old truck, the 2020 Silverado, had two more inches of headroom and three and a half inches more leg room. And the 2022 Silverado is the same. 
that's pretty substantial. Except I can't imagine that most people wouldn't really need all that extra room. But if you want the absolute most room out of the front seats in your truck, I would definitely recommend going to at least sit in and probably drive the Silverado before you commit to the Ram, just to make sure you don't absolutely need that extra room. And another thing I'd like to talk about, ironically pulling into a gas station, is the real world fuel economy. Eric's old Silverado with the V8 in it got around 15 miles per gallon on average, and this truck with the Pentastar V6 gets around 17 miles per gallon on average. And Eric really doesn't do all that much aggressive driving, and most of his trips are usually around town stuff, going to work, local errands and whatnot. To downgrade to a V6 from a V8 with that much of a difference in horsepower and torque for someone like Eric to complain about it. I don't know if a better average of two more miles per gallon difference is worth it for the sacrifice you're making on the powertrain end. All right, let's give it a little bit of a pull. Traction control off, a little bit of a turn into a corner, full throttle. <laughs> the acceleration's not that bad, Eric, come on. <laughs> Braking's good. I mean, this is a family man's pickup truck, come on. It performs just fine for what I'm expecting out of it. I think Eric just misses the V8. That's really what it is. He misses the real low end grunt. This engine certainly has to reel itself out a little bit more to get the full power band coming through. All right, so now we'll check out the turning radius. We have a little fork in the road here that I can turn around and check it out. Yep, definitely a wide turning circle, but this is a big truck. So for what I was expecting, I guess it could be worse. Now let's give it a little send. There we go. <laughs> Traction kicked in. Come on. That totally cut power right there. The traction control cannot be fully turned off in this truck. The only thing I really don't like about the e-torque or the hybrid systems, you can kind of feel a shuddering sometimes when you start or stop from a slow speed. The throttle response is not immediate. It's not super precise. Nonetheless, not that big of a deal for this kind of a truck. Brakes. Power out. <laughs> so now I'm cruising on the highway, going along with traffic at speed. And yes, the wind noise is a little bit more apparent, but honestly, it's really not that bad. And if I just put on some light music, I could see that drowning that out, no problem. This is also a big truck, mind you, and obviously it's gonna create a lot of drag, which makes more wind noise potentially. But they insulated this cabin well enough, and between that and the ride quality, it's a very relaxing and comfortable truck to drive. Speaking of music, I'm now going to play you guys a song, On the Run by Ixon, through this nine speaker Alpine stereo system, which is an upgrade over the regular Ram 1500 that you get with the night edition package and the level two or B equipment group. I don't know how it's going to translate from my microphone to your speakers, but nonetheless, it might give you guys a little bit of an idea of how this stereo system sounds. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's talk price tag. The starting MSRP of the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn trim is around $48,000 UST. Plus, Eric has all these additional add-ons with the night edition package, which is an extra $2,300, plus the level two or level B equipment group, an extra $2,700, brings this truck all said and done to an MSRP of $58,760. And now don't get me wrong, this is a nice truck and I like it a lot, but do you think that it is worth $60,000? Let me know what you think in the comments below. In conclusion, I honestly think that this is a really nice truck. 
However, it does command quite a hefty price tag for just how close it is to the basic end of the spectrum of the Ram 1500 trim levels. For $60,000, I would honestly expect at least a little bit more of a luxurious feeling interior, at least in regards to the materials used. And I would probably also expect a little bit beefier of a powertrain. However, as far as the looks, the ride quality, the features, and all the vast creature comforts that this truck offers, the Bighorn Night Edition will not disappoint. I can honestly say that I believe the 2022 Ram Bighorn Night Edition will be very well suited for an everyday family man's pickup truck. And that wraps up my review on the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn 4x4 Night Edition. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out to grow my channel and it means a lot to me. Take care guys, stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next review. Peace.